Okay, good evening, everybody. My name is Agamjit Dang, managing partner with Executive Access, and I, along with my co-host for the evening, Ms. Aisha D'Souza, am proud to present this exclusive webinar on the Indian consumption, titled "Consumption Story 2.0: Connecting Thoughts." Now we have a power-packed panel with us today, who joined us to deliberate, discuss, debate, and potentially help find solutions to the great Indian consumption story, especially in today's uncertain times. I'm sure they'll give us enough insight into what lies ahead in store. Without further ado, I would like to introduce the panel to you. First up, we have Mr. Anand Gupta, MD Kedara Capital, having 10 years of investment experience and has led Kedara's investments in you know, interesting consumption brands like Vishal Megamart, Lenskart, Manever, Manjushri, and a lot of other ones. He's cut his teeth into investments with uh, you know, Goldman Sachs as an investment uh, banker and someone who's very well versed with the diverse consumer sectors uh, we have. Welcome to the panel, Anand. Next up, we have Mr. Anuj Rustogi, uh, the Chief Operating Officer of ITC Foods. He manages categories like chocolates, coffee, confectionery, and spearhead the new businesses. Prior to ITC, Anuj had a long stint in Unilever across product categories and geographies. Welcome to the panel, Anuj. Next up, we have Devinder Chavla, Managing Director and CEO of Spencer's Retail, a very well-known name in the retail and consumer space with success stories in Walmart, Future Group, and Reliance Retail to his credit. Devendra also has a very strong affinity to the foods category and will be great to hear his views as well. Welcome to the panel, uh, Devendra. Next up, we have, uh, we have Mr. Vivek Sundar, uh, the Chief Operating Officer of Swiggy, somebody who's burning the midnight oil literally in ensuring that our essentials continue to get delivered to us today at our doorsteps. Prior to Swiggy, Vivek had a two-decade innings with PNG, uh, you know, where he's wore multiple hats from an account manager to an MD and practically covering every facet that you can think of in the FMCG space. Welcome, Vivek. Last up, we have uh, Yogesh Balani, the Chief Executive Officer of Field Fresh Foods, also known as Del Monte, which is a JV between Del Monte and Bharti Enterprises, a very, very unique uh, business across B2B and B2C segments. He's been leading the business for about 12 odd years for them. Welcome to the panel, uh, Yogesh. Uh, and to moderate the session for us tonight, I would like to introduce you to uh, Mr. Prakash Ayer. Uh, Prakash, who's the CEO and founder of Leadership Works, best-selling author, as well as a renowned motivational speaker. Started his career with Unilever. And, you know, in his last corporate role, he was the MD of Kimberly Clark. I'm sure Prakash, along with the other panelists, will put up a great conference for all of us. And we are all so eager looking you know, forward to hearing from them. Now, I would like to invite uh, my host, uh, co-host Aisha, to step in and brief you all further. And I look forward to interacting more with you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Agam, so much for that um, lovely introduction. Uh, welcome to all our panelists and to our moderator. Uh, just two words of advice. Uh, if you're dialed in on a mobile phone, you can swipe left or right to see the entire uh, panel. And if you have a question, there is a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to type in there. We have access to it and we will run the panel through your questions as well as the moderator. Prakash, over to you. Have a great evening, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, if you're in some other part of the world, uh, good morning or good afternoon. Um, excited to be uh, with five um, great guys uh, on, this, on this webinar where we're going to talk about the great Indian consumption story. I want to get started really with, with just three numbers. The first, uh, I'm told that there are something like 2,200 registrations for this webinar. <clears throat> it just goes to show how, unlike any other industry, the consumer industry is clearly something that, that kind of catches everybody's fancy and makes people feel, um, you know, in some ways that they are a part of that industry. Think about it. There isn't any other business which actually is named after all of us who pay for it, rather than the fact that you have the automobile industry or the tech industry or, or the manufacturing space, which are all talking about what they do. Uh, and I'm sure all of you listening in, in some ways, think of yourselves as stakeholders in this business. So welcome to this webinar. Uh, the second number, of course, is the fact that you've got five um, truly great guys, people who've got fantastic experience, who've got great stories to tell, who in many ways are living through uh, a lot of the challenges that you're talking about and will then chart the destinies uh, of consumers and their businesses uh, as we go forward. Uh, I'm also mindful, though, that we have five people, all of whom are men, and we don't have a woman on this panel. Um, which I think is a miss, given that all of us talk about our consumer as her, as she, as the lady who, who takes all those decisions. But, you know, worry not, because you'll be happy to hear 
um, that the person who's actually kind of put together this webinar and done a lot of the hard work behind the scenes is actually uh, Aisha, who you heard some time back. So there is a woman's hand in everything. And I know you always suspected that. Um, the last point, of course, is two. That's the other number I want to share, which is that, in a sense, this is an interesting webinar because we have two hosts. Um, our, our hosts for the evening are actually Executive Access uh, and Native. Uh, Native is a, is, a, is a business that tries to help uh, smart young people uh, find the right jobs, find the right place to work, which is really what Executive Access also does, which is to, you know, a search firm that marries uh, talent to, to organizations. <clears throat> and I think it's interesting for us that in some ways, two competitors have got together to collaborate for this webinar. And for those of you looking for lessons from this webinar, even before we get to the five experts, here's your first one. I think the competitors often in our head, uh, we've all got to try and say, hey, how can we collaborate to try and win? And you've got a great example from, from Native and from Executive Access. So thanks to, to both those teams for making this happen. Um, so really without much ado, I'm, gonna, I'm as keen as everyone else to try and understand what's gonna happen to consumer demand, what's gonna happen to consumer behavior, how will the retail landscape change? Uh, what's in it for e-commerce? What's next? So lots and lots of questions. Uh, so without much further ado, let's try and jump into our first question. And, uh, and Devendra, I want to get started with you since you've been the man who's been busy through these last few weeks from what I understand. So tell us, while we've been sitting inside homes, uh, you've been out there minding the store. Um, you've been seeing those consumers. So tell us what's happening inside the consumer's mind. Uh, what's changing in terms of their behaviors? Uh, what are you seeing out there? Thanks, Prakash. Uh, thanks, Executive Access and Native. I, I, think, uh, I think we all are also consumers. And uh, Prakash, as you said, there's ex examples came to my mind on uh, the part where you said even competitors are collaborating. But let's stay with the customer first. I think let's accept it that uncertainty of income, I mean, you, it can't be denied. It's on everyone's mind. You're a business person as a consumer or you're in a job. And I think that will impact the customers or consumers spend. I think the new consumer for some foreseeable future for a couple of months at least will be frugal, will be more conscious. And uh, definitely the wallet spends will be mindful, but it could also get a little skewed on some categories more and skewed towards some categories where the spend could be less. I think we've all seen essentials and we've been in essentials from day one. Like, frankly, none of us stores was used for an hour, right on 23rd. We've been working like it's a day as usual, except everything changed for us on the e-commerce side. And we have a chain in uh, Mumbai, Bangalore and Pune called Nature's Basket. Uh, the concern habits there vary a little bit from what are like in Spencer and I'll come to the premium foods buying even though immunity on both sides uh, is being I think on the non-food side going forward core apparel is what will make sense I think high fashion as we all are used to is going to some time I think I won't say electronics but applying something which have a feeling and I can be wrong, but some bit of revenge buying like panic buying was seen earlier in middle of March before the lockdown or in the first few days. I think some bit of appliances because I've seen data and requests which are coming to us. A couple of hundreds of thousands of appliances are waiting to be mended or to be replaced if not mended. I think current time has also developed. There's a certain fear and a lot of cash or plastic may give way for some time to digital transactions and UPI and they will gain strength and definitely occupy center stage for some time. And I'm very mindful that even if whenever vaccine or medicines, whenever quarters, months, a year, we don't know when are found, I think some bit of these would be, uh, you know, they won't, cons consumers won't go back. This, some shift will be permanent. I think given that we all are at home, I think that it, there'll be a rise in everything which gives us comfort. So I think the biggest word I can say is customers looking for comfort. And it's amazing that nostalgia is back and people are watching Ramayan and, you know, you know, like friends, you know, on television, like something they used to see many years back. And it actually gives them comfort to go back to the tried, tested, something which comforted them. I think same is on food. The comforted food recipes is making sense. I think the games, though they have become digital, 
are also giving them comfort, the old tried ones in new formats and new ways. So if I have to say, you know, philosophically, I think chances are that the souls frayed by the events of COVID and that's all of us. I will, will, all the consumers will continue to seek comfort. I think the new consumer will also seek to be healthier, more caring, more frugal, more conscious, a little less mobile and I'll come to it because less trips, but more to be done per trip. Like I'll tell you one of the shopping behavior we see is a little less frequency in the past, but the bill of the house has not gone down. So if you were buying thousand rupees and buying it four times in a month, people are buying two times in a month, but buying 2000 or 2200 <clears throat> larger bill value, less trips. So that's what I meant by less mobile and yet uh, being more productive. So less mobile still being productive. I think definitely the focus is on fresh and is on hygiene sourced directly from farm. The requests we are seeing have gone up. I think organic will make a comeback ready to eat food so that people can cook faster. Despite that, a lot of people have turned up chef and uh, we don't have time. Otherwise, sure. I would have enjoyed some of those. Sure. And we'll come back to and ask you, Devinder, you also turned chef in the last few weeks, uh -huh. given all, all that's been happening, but staying with the chef and the food business, Anuj, I want to try and turn to you and, you know, David has talked about a few things that have been happening and everything from seeking comfort to perhaps being more frugal uh, to perhaps a mindset change. Uh, what are you seeing as you look at the consumer? Uh, you know, is there a, a shift from a propensity to spend uh, to a propensity to save? Uh, tell us, what are you seeing there? Uh, first of all, uh, uh, thanks, Prakash, and thanks, Executive Access and uh, Native to have me on this panel. Uh, coming to your question, I uh, actually, you know, in India, when you look at consumers, it is very difficult to put them in one one bucket, right? Or even a few bucket. But let me try and bucket consumers. And I, I think some some of it, the way Indra talked about. But I look at there are roughly three sets of consumers, right? One are the consumers, which I will call the revenge shoppers or the revenge consumers. Right? These. These are the people who have not been impacted at all, um, actually, and are huge savings, well-to-do, and they, and it might vary across economic uh, strata, right? It is from their economic strata, they have not got impacted. Uh, and these are the people who will actually, in their behavior, uh, you know, it is almost like a pent-up demand. It's a spring which has been kept compressed. And as soon as that is released, these are the people who will go out and buy, and you see that in a global context, right? So you have heard the news of the Hermes store doing more than $2.3 million sale in a day in China. <clears throat> so, uh, so that will happen. Uh, um, and there is a set of consumers on that, uh, uh, which, uh, which will do that. The second one I almost call is, you know, the near miss or jo bajge, which is who, the person who has uh, escaped uh, unscathed from this and has not had an impact. They have got their salaries or they might have got large part of their salaries. Uh, and, that, and these are the people who will actually uh, somewhat reevaluate their choices. So all the things Devendra talked about, they will start getting into consideration, but from a spend perspective, I think they will first reevaluate on, you know, their savings, are they adequate or not? And then life will perhaps go out uh, as normal in an overall context, I have a different view from different categories. Yeah. Right? And there will be a sizable bit of it. And I almost call them as victim ones and victim two, right? The victim ones will be our consumers who are at this moment getting impacted, like people who are losing their jobs, uh, people who have no pay or actually, you know, as the pandemic goes across, have family members or them getting impacted, right? Uh, so that is one victim one and the victim two is the person who will feel the, uh, you know, we know there's going to be an economic impact. So as that happens over the balance of the year, they are going to get impacted. Uh, businesses are going to struggle, uh, wages, employment, all those things will, uh, will come down and Therefore, this class of consumers, their propensity right now will be to actually, uh, you know, right now be extremely frugal, save, 
because they are dipping in uh, into their savings. Some of it might be inadequate. So the first thing will be to, you know, bring it back to some level. And, you know, once burned, twice shy. So they will try and shore up their safety net for that. And I do not expect, uh, you know, these consumers to uh, start, start spending uh, anytime soon in any extravagant manner. So I think when we look at various businesses and consumers, put our consumers in these three buckets, at least I find it easier to deal with uh, the large mass of, uh, you know, 1.3 billion consumers. Sure. Maybe a quick one on this, which is you look after chocolates to make it easy for us yes. to understand what's happening on chocolates. Will people buy more, buy quickly, revenge, re what, re you know, revenge buying <clears throat> or so, will it be, uh, hang on, yeah, so uh, uh, both things. I think in I would almost say in lockdown one, it was basically essential. So you know all the discretionary uh, were really close to zero, uh, and we are also a large part of our business is at the really uh, luxury end, right through boutiques etc. in malls and hotels. So that really suffered quite badly because all those no. point of sales were hurt. But then uh, you know when I go to the stores now a lot of consumers and driven by comfort and driven by need for dessert and we all have a sweet, but then all the mitai shops are shut and you know, you have concern on hygiene, etc. It is moving off the shelf uh, quite a lot. Uh, but you know, there's a supply chain bit at the retail end because they are rotating their money in essentials. Still, so demand right. is happening and need for comfort uh, is coming back quite strongly as Devendra said and we are finding a great response on you know we are delivering now chocolates directly to your home and societies and okay. I am surprised at the bill value of you know individual consumers buying that much amount of chocolate. Okay, They're Talking about delivering directly to homes and I think the thing that everyone's going to talk about is you know the word that's now become a verb in our vocabulary which is you know don't just buy it swiggy it so I want to turn to you, Vivek, uh, and get your thoughts on what does all this change mean for the e-commerce world? You know, you're in that consumer tech e-commerce kind of space. What's changing out there? And, you know, what I'm very keen to hear from you is also um, for those out there trying to do e-commerce businesses, what is it that they will need to get right to win in this space? Thank you very much, Prakash. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you to... Uh native and executive access. Um, it's a fun thing to do this uh, virtually, uh, but that's what we've really been doing over the last um, 60 days now. So actually while Anuj was speaking, I was trying to see why on earth can I buy, can't I buy ITC chocolates on Sui? Um, because we do have an ITC store. So I made a note to say listing name, we have to fix that one. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's uh, because we do actually have the ITC essentials on, just like we have uh, DC stores on. Fantastic business we've done. Uh, there. So essentially, um, what does it mean for us? Well, our business was, even before COVID, a intensely hyper-local business. Essentially, the business was won or lost in four, four kilometers. And so the country was essentially just, you know, 2,000 four-kilometer polygons where we were trying to win or lose. Um, so it was as local as it gets. There was almost no distance beyond four kilometers that that zone cared about. Both demand and supply was local. Um, so when, for example, the PM said, you know, vocal for local, we were like, okay, hyper vocal for hyper local, uh, because that's really what's happening over the last um, 60 days. Of course, because we were deemed essential, we were operating in half of our cities. It's still been tough because most of the cities were still shut. But where we are operating, we have essentially sprouted new wings, sprouted new businesses. It's just been crazy to see what's happened in the last 60 days. And I think that some of these uh, behaviors will stick even post uh, the lockdown phase because if people have just gotten used to a new normal that uh, you can basically get, um, I mean, the great ITC chocolates at home. So why would you go and look for a, for a store? Um, and so essentially what we are um, doing is we have a food business, which is the typical restaurant business. We have stores and we have Genie and Genie is essentially Ramu. You can tell him to do what you want and he'll do it for you. Uh, in lockdown phase two and three, we were only doing essentials because that was permitted. In part of phase three in the green zones and in phase four, we know that Ginny will start doing all sorts of things, um, uh, including buying things from stores that we didn't know existed. 
because most of the stores that people are buying stuff on, we didn't even know they existed. They're just Googling it and then just saying, Jenny, go buy it from there. And then of course, after that, we pick that data. up. So I think the, um, I think Anuj put it rightly, the India is not one monolith. Um, everybody right now is going through one common experience of lockdown, although it's affecting us in, in different ways. But the challenge would be to understand what of these behaviors and trends that we have seen during the lockdown will stay because it's a habit that they have gotten used to. Um, the challenge will also be to say, okay, what parts of these businesses that we have suddenly gotten into will go away? What trends will go away? And what new trends will emerge in the post lockdown phase that we need to prepare for? And I, do, I think that literally all our business plans have been thrown out of the window because we don't know what the post COVID consumer segments would be. Uh, by the way, we've had four segmentations in the last four months. Uh, I mean, of course, there was the BAU period. And then when there was no lockdown, but only the health care, we had the scared people who completely stayed off food. And those brave souls who were basically saying, Chalega khayenge. this is before lockdown. And then lockdown came. And then now we have three different segments. And then post lockdown, I'm sure we are going to have four different segments of consumers. And we've been, I mean, by the way, right now, the segments are green zone, red zone, uh, yellow zone, because that's the bigger determinant of their behavior. Um, so I think it's, it's very, very important for us to keep polling both quantitatively and qualitatively what the micro trends are, seeing how that evolves and then create a business plan on the fly. So I do think that if businesses think that their most challenging period was now, yes, in a very physical logistics constraint step away, yes. But I think the challenge in terms of the, of the planning phase and basically preparing to win in that phase is actually only going to start now when the post COVID lockdown phase opens up. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. I think the whole idea of hyper local and maybe you guys have defined that for us in, in several ways. And um, you did say that it depends on what's going to stay and what's going to change in terms of consumer behavior. And Vivek, I would want to come back to that in just a bit to try and say that's something everyone wants to know. How much of this change is going to be permanent and what's it that's going to be only for this period? But I want to move on to someone who's got a very different perspective on this business, which is really uh, Anand, who as a PE investor <clears throat> probably sees this business as slightly differently from the way some of you who are operating in it might see. So Anand, I want to come to you and ask you uh, for your thoughts on how you're seeing this consumer landscape. And uh, it's interesting how I think both Anuj and Vivek refer to this is not one India. Uh, you know, there are multiple Indias in, the, in a sense. And I think this is not one consumer business. So what do you see as different pockets and how are they playing out differently? Are there some who will face, face more stress? Some who might see great opportunities in this. Keen to hear your thoughts, Anand. Thanks, Prakash, and thanks, Native and Executive Access, for having me on the forum. I think, uh, uh, Prakash and everyone else, I think what Anuj, Vivek, uh, and Devendra were alluding to, I think there would be a near-term squeeze on the spending and the consumption behavior. But I think a broadly view is that habits don't change. People, I think, adapt and then they readapt back. So is consumption going to go down? No. Is the consumption going to be a little bit different in the next one year? Maybe yes. After three years, maybe uh, it will come back to the normal. I think we'll see. But I think if you talk about the next couple of months or years, I think staples will come back much faster than discretionary. We do feel that uh, once the lockdown is taken out and once the supply and demand is again uh, ready to connect, I think consumption will come back on the staple much faster. Discretionary, I think, will take a little bit more longer time uh, to come back. So maybe... We'll see whether it's a six month or a one year or a one and a half year, but discretionary will take a little bit more time. I think within staple as well, one of the trends which we've been seeing over the last couple of years around premiumization, I think there'll be a reversal in the premiumization trend. And there we will see down trading. We will see value being uh, taking a lot more importance as we think about um, how we go. I think consum consumers will look at more value, more quality. They will look at trusted brands. Uh, they will look at when they're spending money. They will definitely look at what can give me more comfort, what I can use for longer, what I'm very sure that if I spend that money, I'm going to get more value and money for the buck I spent. Um, so that's going to be a second broad trend. I think omni-channel and online platforms will become a lot and lot more interesting. Uh, if you think about retailing today, what happens is retailing, there's an engagement phase, there's a sales phase. There's a post sales phase and then you have the customer come back. I think what will happen is where people earlier were only using retail and offline channel to experience the products. 
you will see a lot of people will start experiencing the products on an online while they might still consume it the sale in an offline manner or in some sort of an omni channel manner but definitely the experience online will go up so today unlike earlier where people will go to stores and experiment 10 different things i think now people when they go to the store they would experience a lot of stuff before and when they go to the store the tendency will be to look at what we exactly want and then just narrow down within the within those particular things so i think omni channel and e-commerce will be a very broad vertical the third thing i think home will become increasingly a very important consumption point and which goes to i think what vivek was also alluding to i think home has always been an interesting and a very large consumer point but if you think about some of the industries where consumption will move from outward centers to home center whether it's qsr or food whether it's entertainment um, so whether it's watching uh, uh, movies or things at home it's the ott platforms gaming etc will become increasingly more important i think some of these services consumer services will also move uh, in house so businesses like salon spa i think you will see a lot of those services moving to your consumption sector at home so i think those would be the three broader consumer trends i think what we are seeing additionally one large trend um which would love to get everyone else view but my sense is that market leaders and organized players will do better um they will leverage the balance sheet in this particular time to either gain market share or to drive consolidation some of the smaller players in this time frame will either um see that given the liquidity situation will slow down on the growth and investment i think a lot of smaller players will also start focusing on what is the core products what is the core geographies and rather than going out and expanding they will focus on the core lot more and yeah. i think the third thing is uh, a lot of people especially the smaller companies will slow down on investment so i think those yeah. would be the three four broad trends i believe we would see super yeah i would have thought you'd say that the large companies will leverage their balance sheet and the other guys will come to private equity <laughs> that's the that's just, the following follow up answer <laughs> I just thought there was an interesting point you made, Anand, and I want to quickly get your response on that. You talked about down trading as one of the trends, and I'm just wondering that you know, um, as I see it, maybe there'll be a lot of homes which will not spend on holidaying, for example, you know, or those large, big ticket, you know, I don't know, maybe the fancy car might get delayed a little bit. So will that, in a sense, free up money, which will allow folks like me to also say, let me go and buy that ITC chocolate finally car. Yeah. You think that will happen, or will there be a down yeah, trade? So I think, I think that, see, I think two, three things will happen. One is obviously some of the large consumption, like travel, tourism, luxury. I think that will take a little bit of it because if you see the next two months, last two months, and the next two, three months, especially if you look at people in the middle class and all, are going to dip into the savings. So I think effort will be once you come out of it, you build that saving, you build that comfort zone. There is a little bit, uh, there is quite a bit of uncertainty around future earnings. so i think till all of that is there people will spend less on their luxury stuff on vacation on tourism i think the second thing which will happen is within what people have been consuming i think there will be down trading so if mm-hmm. i was earlier probably willing to try a organic variant of something which was costing me 300 bucks probably i would look at can i live with a 200 bucks more run of the mill product but is it solving the same thing so i do believe that there would be a down trading which will happen even within the staples in apparels i believe definitely which is falls into the discretionary i think you would see down trading happening where people will definitely spend much lesser sure quick check any of the other panelists has a contra view on that one no okay so let me move on to to your guest so thanks so much anand that was that was extremely useful uh, <clears throat> and you know talking about uh, discretionary spending and and that i i think I want to get Yogesh in, in on this one because Yogesh, the business you have, which is you know, Feel Fresh, is not just supplying all those juices to all of us, but also a fairly large business in the Horeca segment, supplying directly into restaurants and hotels. And I'm, I'm just wondering what's going to happen to that entire eating out habit that all of us have, and what's going to happen to restaurants. What are you hearing from from your customers? Do you see a change in that behavior coming up? Uh, so th- thanks, Prakash, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Executive Access and Native, for, for inviting me on the panel. Um, yeah, I think I, I think Prakash to to give you a broad sense that out of home consumption, as we as we know, and and dining out or restaurants or on premise uh, consumption, is probably taking the worst hit at the moment. So so clearly, 
you you have have a space which has been uh, severely impacted and i think i think going going from here uh, and you know coming coming in last to speak always gives you this opportunity to synthesize what everybody has been saying and i think i think a lot of I think the dots i think we, we we already see an emerging picture which says a the consumer is 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 cautious is extremely cautious and we are seeing that uh, the very fact that you know the entire consumption is now home centered you know it's all about the home you're not you're spending all your time at home i mean people like us who used to be out most of the time all your meals are at home so clearly home home as a center as a consumption point is obviously growing and and, and will will be where most of the time is going to be spent as a family and as a as a unit uh clearly means that the out of home consumption uh because of your cautious nature and because even 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 to the fact that if if we were to believe that you know delivery is 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 an option and and we heard we make say that it's very cautious at the moment so clearly uh that cautious behavior and and, and clearly till the time there is elements of comfort in people moving out and and we talked about the the mobility bit i think the mobility bit is is clearly being visible I and mean, if you look at people doing uh you know that their weekly shopping trips becoming becoming twice so uh, you know in 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 a month uh to go to buy their regular grocery uh the 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 consumption at on premise or going out to the restaurant is is a little stressed at the moment so if this would need to be addressed and i guess this will need to be addressed the way we look at it currently is in in this sector is going to recover in in different spaces so this clearly going to be an area which is going to recover much faster than the other and we've talked about the segmentation between red orange and and green but there's also this whole thing about how tier 2 or, or semi urban or rural areas would behave given 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 where they stand in the in the in the whole context of of the infection at the moment so you'll see recovery you'll see recovery in different different parts in the eureka segment in the travels to take but coming back to your specific question around restaurants i think the the core core issue that would need to be addressed and, and i speak that as a consumer as as a husband as a father uh, would be would be the trust element you know so how am i going to trust the environment come in and that's where things come point straight away so there is the social distancing aspect so clearly the restaurants need to remodel themselves in terms of you know so there's lesser capacity you'll you will probably need to space yourself out etc but i think the one thing that is getting going missing in this is that the most number of people per square foot is not in the front end but in the back end now in the back end which is the kitchen you need to solve for that problem now how are you going to solve for that problem so you clearly you are hearing from the experts in in the restaurant industry saying that you know the number of people who work in my kitchen at the back end will have to go down so in in the front end i can put partitions or i can go with reduced is depending upon what the context is but on the back end which is the kitchen i i need to address number of people but most importantly the kitchen is also the place from where the trust will have to be rebuilt so a lot of people are actually talking about open kitchen and that's a fantastic idea in my opinion so you walk into a restaurant and you have an open kitchen you see limited number of chefs working uh, so remodeling a restaurant maybe smaller menus because you have lesser people on the back end uh, can't do too many things in terms of fancy so fine dining will be will be a new new venture totally sure that's interesting and and i guess um, that entire experience of eating out's going to get redefined and i'm Absolutely. just wondering whether you'll also have chefs coming home <laughs> and and perhaps cooking for you i think something anand referred to as the salon coming home or a whole lot of the services you know, coming home i was just speaking to one of one of the leaders in the restaurant industry only yesterday and he's a great friend and he was saying you know people actually don't just come for the food they come for the ambiance they come yeah. for the environment uh they come for the whole package the whole package is going for a change so i think it's going to be a big question mark from here on so clear oh yeah and as a lot of men on this panel will tell you they also come for not having to wash dishes post the meal <laughs> so <laughs> so there's a lot going there absolutely you know, i want to i want to quickly touch upon something that's been alluded to which is this whole idea of big brands versus potentially small brands or emerging brands and i'm just wondering whether a reset like what's happening right now um and vivek i want to get your thoughts on this one as to what you know as someone who's worked for those big brands at png uh, and now is really someone who's carrying brands on your on your platform in a sense uh, and delivering them what do you think is the future do you think there's an opportunity for small brands fighter brands you know who address something else uh, where 
no frills, I don't want to pay a premium. You know, someone talked about down trading. So do you think big brands will have it better or will big brands actually struggle a little bit as we go forward? Um, I, I think the answer is it depends on whether the brands have uh, adapted to the problems that consumers will face. Ash is absolutely right um, in terms of how consumers will, hygiene will take at least for the foreseeable future. We don't know what's going to happen a year from now. People may lapse a little bit. But at least for the foreseeable future, hygiene and comfort will be a key. Uh, now in that world, there are two types of restaurants that I think can win. And I'm sure we'll agree with that. One is a type of restaurant which basically says, I'm going to prepare, prepare food in the way you would uh, at home. I'm going to make sure that the kitchen is clean, the, prop, the, prop, the ingredients are clean, and I'm going to be transparent about showing it to you, just like I would do it for, for my home. And another set of restaurants which is likely to win is a restaurant that basically invests in very strong processes to make sure that it delivers great hygiene and cleanliness like many of the QSRs do. So you could actually have a situation where a small guy who's able to promise this trend that Yogesh rightly called out is being delivered, but they're doing it through intimacy and they're, doing, they're essentially getting the trust through intimacy. And there's another on the opposite spectrum, a large brand, which is actually not doing it through intimacy because there's no way anybody has a relationship with their local McDonald's chef. That doesn't happen, but they're doing it through what is what brands really do, which is to make sure that when there is a brand on that package, it stands for something. Now, as long as the big brands are essentially saying, I'm going to stand for this one thing that consumers care about and they, and, and they do it well and they're able to make sure that they're able to deliver that with the right costs and everything else, they're fine. And the opposite end is the small person who's able to still deliver that um, through intimacy. So I think the problem would be the middle who's kind of neither, neither has the capital to compete with the big guy and the process is to compete with the big guy nor does he have the, the intimacy and the, and the kind of you know, connect that you're likely to have with your local pizzeria. So it's funny because if you speak about, I'm, I'm calling in from Bangalore, there are only two types of restaurants that are, that are actually doing well in the locality that I'm calling from. There are the really small you know, mom and pop stores that were actually serving home style food that have reopened after they got raw, raw material and they're now back on the platform. And they had trust even before, they've made, made sure they've got trust on a hyper, accelerated basis and the QSRs who basically are hammering the point around how they have got social distancing and cleanliness and gloves and temperature checks and everything else. It's the middle that will got squeezed. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But tell me, do you also see therefore like your local pizzeria or that mom and pop restaurant, do you see an opportunity for uh, or the emergence of hyper local brands perhaps in this whole, you know, go local for local. Do you think that's going to happen? I think that was already happening to an extent. I think that was definitely happening even in the in the packaged food space. Um, I mean, I, I was in DC store an hour ago when he was huffing and trying to get the product in there. I bought a boatload of products, exactly like you said, high, low frequency, high basket size. And if you look at some of the brands I brought, they were essentially brands that were intimate. They were talking about the fact that I've made this organically or I made this at home. So I don't know those brands, but somehow the fact that it was inside a nature's basket gave me one level of comfort. And then the double fact of what they were making a promise on made me compete. So I do think that this is a good place for small brands, at least in the food space, to be able to hold their own, whether it's restaurant, therefore cooked food or it's processed food. On the other hand, of course, you have brands uh, that Anuj runs, which can also deliver that, but in a very different way. Sure, sure. So DC, you must be a happy man knowing that there are people shopping even while you're sitting over here and trying to answer some questions. Uh, but tell me, uh, how, this whole debate no, no, I'm around... greedy. I want him to buy more. I'm very greedy also. I don't know how much he bought. I'll, I'll call him later and ask him. Probably he bought less. Yeah. So I'm just wondering whether he buys it. I'm surprised he buys from his store. I thought he'd go on to Swiggy and then order from the Spencer store out there. But anyway, we'll come back. Only I know what I'm capable of. I'm not capable of delivering 10 kgs of water. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So a lot of a lot of curiosity around the, what's going to change given that, you know, for a few weeks we found shopping malls were shut and supermarkets had their own challenges. Um, while your neighborhood Kirana store was the one who you were able to kind of go in and buy something from. So I'm just wondering, DC, what's your thoughts around um, that the local Kirana store versus this large supermarket? How is that going to play out in the future? Uh, I know they'll both exist, but do you see do you see a change in consumer preference, a change in consumer behavior? Do you see discounting uh, as something that might change as we go forward? So, Prakash, uh, it's amazing. Uh, you know, 
15 years back when I had uh, joined modern retail, this, this was the question which you posed me after probably many, many years because the dialogue in the middle changed. Earlier it was modern trade versus Kirana, then it became e-commerce was versus modern trade, then it became omni-channel. It's a long time that it's become modern trade versus Kirana. But I'm going to slightly disappoint people because I have the same old answer which I've been saying. Actually, if consumers were so simple, and I'll go to what Anand said actually, habits don't change so easily at all. And we, we as people get very influenced by uh, what's recent and just the pandemic is huge. But let's ask ourselves, you know, the channel or the mediums will evolve. But I don't think consumer behavior or behavior of, of ours changes so quickly. Like, let me give an example. We had the age old telephone. We still call each other on the phone. Maybe we use a WhatsApp call. We still call. But sometimes you want to see each other. So we're doing a web call or I can call you on WhatsApp video. But, but now leave the pandemic. But otherwise you want to meet people. You meet the same friend somewhere. You call the same friend on a phone. You may call video call the same friend. So trying to, the point I'm making is in the customer journey, there is a role for every format. There, there was always a role for Kirana. There was always a role for supermarket. And there was always a role for e-commerce. I think going forward, these the distinctions will go away as straight jacket, and they obviously they are already merging in a manner of speaking. Frankly, right now, if you ask us, Vivek will tell you we are an e-commerce company. If I tell you the business, and I'm a listed company, so I can't give numbers up, but the kind of orders we are delivering on our e-commerce platform, or like I'll give you an example. Two days within the lockdown, 23rd, uh, we called up the Uber Asia president. Today, we have hundreds and thousands of cars delivering thousands and thousands of orders each day because a guy on a bike can take 10 orders in a day in eight, 10 hours, but a car can take 40 orders in a day. So you optimize. Then we got in touch with Swiggy. We got Scoozy in Mumbai. We, you know, there are nine such Zippy, you know, then Flipkart. Everybody approached because nobody, stocks was the biggest challenge. Every, and I'll come to the point which you mentioned about executive access and native. I think those days are gone where you can exist alone because it has to be cooperation. You'll have to cooperate somewhere and there will still be competition. It's yeah. already happening in the platform <clears throat> digital world. So I don't think it's either or, but definitely, yes, the digital touch point in the customer journey will come in. So I don't see as, as Kirana versus like we've, we've, our group has invested in a company called Peelworks. They buy from us and give it to Kirana. So now I have to ask myself, I use Vivek's company to deliver online. Somebody buys from me and delivers to Kirana. Where is the distinction? So I think this whole big ecosystem is getting created and it's the choice we should leave it to the customer because when they want to buy 200 or 300 rupees or 500, it will be the Kirana. When they want to buy something which they need right away, it could be like going to a supermarket and vice versa for e-commerce. Great point. Great point. I think it's, it's becoming one, one big ecosystem. But even within that one big ecosystem, I know you talked about how there are differences and I want to try and get your sense on, do you think there's going to be a, a different emphasis on rural because that's behaving very differently and there's an opportunity in terms of small town slash rural India, which might be very different from what typically some of us might be experiencing in the larger cities? Yeah, so they are, uh, as I said, they are experiencing this pandemic very differently, right? So. So far, touch wood, they are uh, not that affected. Um, and uh, before I answer this question, it is also important to understand the context rural India was in, right? Because last year, the entire, before the pandemic, the, the entire story was consumption slowdown. And that was led by rural India uh, because of a huge crisis at the, at the income agri end. Right? And government did a lot of work in terms of raising the MSP of essential uh, agri-commodities to support farmers' income. And fortunately, we had a good monsoon and our water reservoirs are full. And, you know, barring some, some of the crops and one or two crops always have an issue, that, uh, there, is a, there was a general bullishness which was coming back in that. So consumer demand led by rural was on a recovery path at least when you look at the first two months of the quarter, of the quarter gone by, right? So the rural India uh, entered this crisis with that and they are largely untouched. So I think from a relative perspective, they are the, uh, 
places where demand will continue to grow and be far more robust compared to their pre-level uh, as compared to urban India, right? Now, that is where it is important for people to forecast what will happen, you know, a couple of months down the line where migrant labor has gone back. When will they come back? Is it a temporary dip or a long-term dip? Uh, you know, what is happening to agri prices? Because if there is a demand destruction in urban and, uh, you know, they can shoot up because some of the international commodities can't come in or they can go down really because of demand destruction. And that is, yeah. you know, very temporary or so I think, but in a general sense, rural India will be better. Yeah. And for uh, most of the consumer goods companies focusing on small town rural India uh, will be better. They don't live in high rises. The population density is much lower. So even if there is an unfortunate incidence, yeah. right, the amount of people getting impacted uh, and our ability to get out of it will be better. So that I do think uh, will be the case, at least for the uh, foreseeable future in this, uh, this financial year. Okay, got it. Yogesh, um, just want to pick up on that one and get your sense on what, what does all this mean from a supply chain standpoint? Do you see that as having a new set of opportunities or more challenges perhaps? What changes do you see there? So clearly, I think I think just just the way we're talking about an omni-channel, I think it's, it's everything that is that is going to be used to actually get to the consumer. Because I think what we've seen in the in the last couple of months is the ability of uh, product at the last mile, and and I think that that's the one that's been challenged. And uh, we've clearly seen uh, how bandwidths which were available on the food services side, whether it's the you know the, the case of Swiggy themselves or even dominoes, how, how that bandwidth has moved towards uh, in-home consumption and, and the retail. Because the, the problem that we all were trying to solve for was really how do you get the product onto the shelf and then from the shelf to the consumer. So I think what's really happened in this whole thing is that you have this whole ability of getting the product to the, to the shelf, which was the erstwhile way of FMCG. But what has also emerged is this entire D2C model where, you know, because there is so much of restriction, uh, for example, if you are in a, in a position where the retailer is not open or your distribution is not open and you got logistics issue, the consumer still needs to be serviced. So is there a way to get to that consumer? Uh, and I think a lot of companies have actually gone direct to get to the consumer through Vivek and his services at Swiggy or, or, or uh, with, with many of the other opportunities that, that are there. So I think the route to market, the go-to market, which is at the end of the day solving for getting the product to the consumer or to the shelf. So I think, I think that's where the last mile has been challenged. And I think going forward, you will probably see many a solution which will allow this to actually get sorted for. But having said that, this is the front end of the supply chain problem. Uh, there's also the back end of the supply chain problem. And, and you need to actually, especially in this kind of an environment where you don't know where the next lockdown may happen or where the next containment zone may come up, uh, you actually cannot work on a predictive model. So clearly one of the things that this crisis is teaching all of us is that you need to go scenario building. And, and scenario building will then again put a lot of pressure on supply chain as to how do you, how do you keep yourself evolving on a day-to-day on a, on a -day basis because you have a main warehouse in, in, in one part of a state and that goes containment suddenly. Uh, what would you do? And I, I think those challenges will be there. So I think the supply chain and, and, and everybody in supply chain and, and I'm not, not surprised that the PM himself was talking about supply chain many a time in his in 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 speech. Yeah. Uh, speech. Uh, that's, that's definitely going to be a challenge, uh, Prakash. But, but yeah. I, I think, I think there's, there's a lot that one can expect from our robust supply chain experts to, to really solve for this ongoing problem. Sure. And I love that advice that you have for businesses to do scenario building rather than get locked into a, you know, a plan of what, what might happen in the future. So Anand, uh, if, you know, you must be seeing a lot of entrepreneurs uh, who are looking for investments, who've got ideas, and, and I'm just trying to figure, if a young entrepreneur in the consumer business came up to you and asked for advice at this point in time, yeah. what are two or three things that you might have to yeah. offer? Yeah, you know, uh, I think two broad things or three broad things I would think about is one, uh, entrepreneurs who are running businesses in the times like today, 
liquidity is the most important thing so cash 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 is it just can't get uh, the importance of cash is even more today in my mind a lot of people wait for the last minute to raise capital and what ends up happening is they feel that today we are doing okay and we don't need capital it's easier to raise capital now versus when you are in a desperate situation and you're running out of cash so as people think about liquidity and raising funds some of this is going to continue for the six months or one year or even longer so if capital raises somewhere on the charts do it when you're in a comfortable position versus when you're running out of capital and you're on the on the brink the second thing i would say is even more important now as people are thinking about their business model that the cost has to become more a variable function you need to recalibrate your pnl as you think about businesses from a fixed cost to a completely variable cost model because no one knows right now how long this will go how the lockdown will uh, play out um, how what will happen eventually so, so from that perspective it's very important that cost becomes as much of a variable play um people will need to think asset light people need to think more capital efficiency and i think when people also think about cost the other thing is one is making it variable and but the second part is also it's equally important to think how we can increase the productivity now across a cost base can we use better technology can we actually start using um given can we start using work from home more efficiently not just across consumer but a lot of other businesses where we are seeing so this this crisis probably has in the last one and a half months forced everyone to actually think about innovation which people were planning two and three years out and that's gotten accelerated and i'm sure vivek is seeing a lot of that happening with a lot of companies retail companies who at some point of time were considering omni channel or delivery have suddenly accelerated and made that a month month and a half so my sense is i think liquidity of a flexible cost system um and i would say to entrepreneurs who have considered this at some point of time we will come out of it start thinking about how your business model will recalibrate when we come out of it and think about if you have capital ready how can you grow aggressively in terms of gaining market share and driving consolidation because the window of opportunity will come at that point of time it's tough so you know focus on liquidity flexible cost structures and have a plan for getting back into business um and a quick question for you around something that i know that you're you invested in which is a uh, ethnic wear business so i'm just wondering what's going to happen to all our purchases of in terms of fashion and apparel um do you think we'll all go back to quickly buying that third set of clothes we don't need so i think um, see what will happen is i think um, as i said discretionary will take a little bit of a hit i think in every category the staple will first pick up so even if it's apparel you will see the staple apparel picking up much ahead of the discretionary i think the discretionary apparel will take a little bit more time the essentials we are seeing so we've invested in obviously vishal and lenthart as well which are uh, essential and there we are seeing very quickly the essentials coming back people who want it are using it and i think where i was talking about omni channel for example lenscart is a perfect model yeah. so you actually you can go on the app you can see what frame suits you and then you can decide to order on the app you can go to the store you can order there you can call someone at your home to do an eye test you can deliver get it delivered at home or the store or wherever you want so it's a through and through omni channel play i think some of that stuff you'll start seeing more sure sure you get sure uh, to come back to something you said which is the prime minister's repeated reference to supply chain uh, there was this other reference to you know going vocal for local and i'm i'm just wondering uh, what's going to happen to all those you know china imports that happen you know low cost products coming in uh, do you think there will be a, a move away from it or do you think it's a matter of time before economics overtakes sentiment i think i think prakash I'll, i'll give this this question a little bit of a, a flip as well uh, so one one is this whole thing about about china imports and 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 the ability of uh, replacements to happen locally so i th- i think that that was an opportunity is an opportunity probably will get more mind space even from the government whether it's through the msme route or whichever way it is uh, definitely definitely a, an opportunity but uh, if i was to just flip this whole thing about uh, i think for food businesses uh, out of india and i i would restrict myself to this example with the food business i think what we are also seeing is globally supply chains uh, are going to go in for a, a, a disruptive change now 
because of scenario planning, as I was mentioning that, you know, a lot of, lot of the, the, the uh, consumption points would want to have tighter supply chain, which means you don't want to bring it from transatlantic and you, or transpacific and want to be closer to home. Or you're going to see the, the other way around, which is, to, which is to say that, how am I going to do scenario building, which is to say that, do I have contingency plans, uh, for example? So I think in, and, and then the second part of this whole thing is the entire geopolitical bit, which we probably don't understand at the moment. But if I was to draw a big reference out of what the PM was trying to say, I think there is also a big reference to make in India and to make India reliant. For example, if you were to just take that conversation forward, he also said that every global brand started as a local brand. Now that's what things all about. So what we actually, what I actually would like to believe is that some of these global disruptions that are happening and the crisis is a great example of setting some of these in motion. And we've seen that in the past, whether it was the Great Depression or with the World War II. I think global reset of supply chains and thereby ability of food businesses to play, you know, for a long time we've been talking about can India be the food factory to the world? But I think there's a genuine ability uh, for today India to play a role in the global supply chain on food. And, and I'm not talking about the bottom of the pyramid, which we've historically done, which is to do commodity trading, which is really law of comparative advantage, which actually gets the goods to flow. But what I'm really talking about is comparative advantage, which might come through because of this rebalancing and recalibration of global supply chains. So I think that, that's really uh, the way I would look at this uh, as, a, as an additional point to looking at it inwardly from a domestic consumption point of view. Sure. Interesting. Vivek, uh, I want to come back to your point earlier about some things in the consumer which will change and some things which will probably, you know, um, go back to being the way it was. So I want to ask you a question. As you look at the consumer of the future and Swiggy, um, tell me, what's one thing that gets you excited about the future and one thing that's probably worrying you right now about the consumer? Sure. Um... You're talking about essentially consumption uh, rather than the consumer. Let me just give a more sort of demographic or sociographic thing. And this is nothing to do with COVID. It is uh, something we've all seen in our lives. Uh, I think female participation in the workforce is increasing. Um, and that's a good thing on many fronts. Um, of course, very directly, it brings diversity and 100% more talent into the workplace and all of those things that many of us are essentially going after. And I know you mentioned that this is an entirely undiverse panel in that sense. Uh, but the impact of that on consumption is uh, quite profound. It, um, I don't think washing machines in the US would have basically, um, I mean, the impact of washing machines and, and home appliances on female participation in the workforce is not to be undermined. The fact is in our type of a society, it's probably going to cause other effects like a change in the family's consumption behavior. You know, more Swiggy ordering is a direct consequence of that. We obviously see a massive difference between um, a house where the, where the lady of the house is the primary food giver and where she's essentially also uh, uh, going out to earn. Um, Swiggy food, but also Swiggy grocery um, will, will make a difference. Obviously, Ginny, you know, you need somebody to do the work. So a whole host of, when Anant was talking about the home becoming a center for not uh, nesting, but also perhaps consumption, uh, it requires this thing called female participation in the workforce. So that's an exciting sort of secular trend. I don't think it, I mean, COVID will come and go and things will happen, but essentially that's an increasing number. And I do think it makes a difference to many of our uh, businesses. Uh, that's, that's something which I'm excited about, obviously, um, for India. Mm -hmm. um, the negative or the stuff that makes me worry is, um, is the fact that this sort of excess of consumption is having a lot of externalities. Um, environment is one of them. Um, and I think that if you think about the amount, I'm sure many of us love the, the eff efficiency and effectiveness of any of these e-commerce delivery, but the reality is it comes with a boatload of plastic packaging and uh, you know empty miles and all of that. So I think the negative impact of all of this consumption on the environment is, uh, is a worrisome factor because at some stage, it will lead to negatives that we then will have to do a reset on. Um, and I do think, I do hope that at an early stage of our development, we, we, we sort of, you know, grapple it, both as private companies as well as governments, because in the absence of that, I think we'll just create a, a very convenient living environment, but a messy, but a mess to live in. Mm. Interesting. And you don't want that, do you? None of us wants that. So I think that, that's wise words from Vivek. 
Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I can see there are loads of questions that have come in from the audience and I'm you're going to try and answer those and I'm hoping some of them have already got answered. Uh, but what we want to do before we get to the audience questions is our, you know, how can you have a webinar and not have a rapid fire round? So we're going to do a set of questions, which will be uh, a rapid fire. And what I'm going to do is to try and, you know, address them to one person at a time and then maybe have a few questions. And what you need to do, of course, is to just quickly respond. So don't think too hard. Don't think too much. And let's just get on. So I'm going to start with you, Anuj, um, on this one. So as they say, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> Okay, that's a long, well thought out ready because that's the last time you get to think so much about it. Okay, Aluj, first question. Tell us one household chore that you're now very good at. Cooking. What's one thing that you'd like to do once the lockdown is lifted? Get a proper haircut. Okay, great. <laughs> um, tell me, agree or disagree? People will buy fewer clothes. Agree. Eating out will be popular again soon. Maybe. Uh, that's not an option. <laughs> Agree or disagree? Uh, short term. Uh... That is not an option. Agree or disagree? <laughs> disagree. Disagree. Eating out will be popular again soon. Great. Uh, consumers will prefer neighborhood Kirana stores to supermarkets. Disagree. Great. Uh, one change in consumer behavior that you think is here to stay? I think fear will be part of our choice. So fear will be a part. Fear and anxiety will be part, a key part of our consideration set when we choose brands, products. One lesson you've learned from this crisis? I think uh, new ways of working and new ways of engagement and uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, things which we ignore at home. So uh, for self and for my team, so it is all about, you know, work at home as much as uh, work from home. Okay, that's a long one, but interesting one. Uh, last question. One change in the ways of doing business that you think is here to stay? Uh, more virtual, more digital. More virtual, more digital. Thank you so much, Anuj. And I'm going to move quickly to you, Anant. Um, and if you're ready, we can get started straight away. A book yes, you're right. reading right now. Sorry? Uh, tell us about a book that you're reading right now. What it takes. What it takes. Um, one web series that you regret watching. Bird Box by Net uh, on Netflix. Okay. One household chore you're now really good at. Mopping the floor. Ad advice to an entrepreneur. Invest. Or conserve? Conserve, right. Agree or disagree? The worst is behind us. Uh, for lockdown, yes. For virus, no. Work from home is not for consumer businesses. Disagree. Discounting will increase? No. Short term, yes. Long term, no. Short term, long term, medium term. Quick answer, yes or no. Discounting no. will increase? No. Agree? No, disagree. Consumers will prefer supermarkets to Kirana stores. Disagree. Supermarkets. So, will prefer supermarkets. Yes. Great. Okay. Um, one lesson you've learned from this crisis. The ability of good management teams to maneuver a crisis. Super. Good management teams. One change in consumer behavior that you think is here to stay. Work from home and importance of home. And one change in the ways of doing business that you think is now here to stay? I think work from home. Work from home. WFH is suddenly in everyone's vocabulary. Thank you so much, Anand. And we're going to Thanks. move to you, Yogesh. Um, so let's get started with you. And of course, we must know one household chore that you are now good at. Oh, mopping the floor for sure. Okay. One show that you watched and loved and would recommend? Sherlock Holmes. I love, love Benedict Cumberbatch. What's the first thing you would like to do once this lockdown ends? Sorry, well, go, go and run, run and run. I'm missing my runs. You're missing your runs. Inter interesting. Agree or disagree? People will buy fewer clothes? Agree. Eating out will be popular again soon? Not in the short term. <laughs> Context. <laughs> Discounting will increase? No. 
value? Big brands or smaller players, the likely winners in the future? Brands will play a role, Prakash, for sure. Okay. This is what happens when you have a lot of CEOs on a panel. Ask a straight question and, you know, good chance that you'll get long answers. Okay, quick ones. Um, one piece of advice for your teams, Yogesh. Uh, scenario building and decide decisively. Okay. One thing about consumer behavior that's surprised you in the last few weeks. Uh, I think overtly pessimistic at times, overtly cautious at times. Uh, but at the same time, I've seen uh, this on two sides of the spectrum. So now, now both, both seem to be playing out. It's, it's almost akin to, you know, in the earlier days, we used to say that the same shopper in, 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 a, in a supermarket would on one aisle up trade and on the other aisle down trade, contextual. So, so you're clearly seeing that as well happening now. Okay. Uh, and one change in the ways of doing business that you think is here to stay? Virtual work from home, I think, uh, is clearly, and, and I think uh, Anand alluded to it at, at some point, which is to see, you're going to see more and more variable cost models. And I think, I think that that's going to be one of the things that's, that's going to be here to stay. One prediction you want to make for the future about consumption? Consumption is going to be intact. You'll probably see reallocation of budget. So consumption is going to be there. Uh, discretionary and essential, we've heard a lot about it. Yes, people are going to be cautious because there's too much of anxiety and uncertainty. Uh, but you will still see consumption and, and, and let's, let's admit the fact that, you know, uh, choices of consumption are limited now. There's not so much of out-of-home entertainment. So what are you going to do at home? So there's comfort, but you also need your mood of uplifters and you need your entertainment at home. So probably reallocation of budget, but again, contextual to, to where you are. Super, super. Thanks very much, Yogesh. And I'm going to come to you, DC. Um, and if you're ready, we're going to start with you now. One item that you've sold or delivered the most in the last four weeks? Sanitizers. One household chore that you are now very good at. I always respect my boss. Whatever my wife says, I do at home. All I'm the chores. About old habits. I'm talking about something new you've got right now. Oh, cooking. Cooking. Great. One web series movie that you regret watching. Actually, sorry. I mean, because if I start in first 10 minutes, don't get me. I stop them. So none, none. I've loved all Great. I've seen. Great stuff. One thing you wish you had done before the lockdown started? Well, never let a good crisis go waste. So probably be better prepared next time knowing that such a big thing can hit you. Okay. Agree or disagree? The worst is behind us? No. Disagree. Disagree. People will buy fewer clothes? Uh, so I'm going to give all my answers, uh, which are the long term. I will ignore the short, long term. Uh, disagree. We are human beings. Eventually, we'll be back to normal. Eating out will be popular again, therefore? Yes. Okay. Discounting will increase? No. Okay. And uh, let's try and get this one now, which is one lesson that you've learned from this crisis. I think I'll, I just said it before also that I think adaptability and never let a good crisis go waste, like trying to pivot and, you know, quickly become more digital. All those fabulous people out there doing work in your stores, one piece of advice for your team. No advice, big thank you to them. They've taken so many risks and six, six and a half thousand people have worked from day one, from 23rd March. I bow I to you. them, no advice for them. God bless them. DC, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Aisha, can you hear him? I can't hear him. Yeah, yeah, we can hear him. We can, we can hear him. Yeah, we can hear him. Yeah. I, I can hear you, Prakash. So let me repeat the answer. I said no advice for staff in store. A big thank you and I bow to them because six and a half thousand people right from 23rd March have been working like another day. And it's not simple in these times. So frankly, no advice, but thanks. Prakash, you're on mute. Prakash, you're on mute. Sorry, I got dropped off for just a bit. So I missed that last answer about your advice to your team. Can you quickly repeat it for me and for everyone else? So, so as I said, I think it's a very humbling time. I think we are too used to giving advice to our teams. This is one time where I just want to thank them and, you know, a lot of respect for them and bow to them for what they've done and turned out from day one in stores. It's not easy. They have taken risks. No advice, but a big thanks to them. 
Super. And one last one, a change in consumer behavior that you think is here to stay. I think more digital, more and more digital touch points in the whole customer journey, whichever category you are in big time. So, you know, brands need to learn and work with retailers to understand it jointly. Super. Thanks very much, DC. And uh, our last person on this rapid fire, Vivek, if you're ready, I'm going to start with you now. Uh, you've got to tell us one household chore that you're now very good at. Helping kids with homework. Okay. What's the one thing that you'd like to do once this lockdown is lifted? Uh, one was jungle safari. One thing you I had to ask you this. One thing you wish you had done if you knew six months ago that this lockdown will happen. Six months ago, I wouldn't have done much. But if I knew before the lockdown, I would have done a haircut. Done a haircut. Okay. A book you are reading right now? Um, I'm reading Misbehaving by Richard Taylor. The guy with not much. Yeah. Agree or disagree? The worst is behind us. Agree. People will buy fewer clothes. No. Eating out will be popular again soon. Yes. Agree. Work from home is not for consumer businesses. Disagree. Discounting will increase. Disagree. The future belongs to e-commerce. <laughs> that's, a, that's a yes. Agree. <laughs> that, yeah. Okay. Um, one item that Swiggy has delivered the most in the last four weeks. That's a boring answer. Biryani. Okay, nothing's changed. A lesson you've learned from this crisis? Um, the resilience of the customer. Honestly, I was shocked that customers are still ordering when they were so scared. Okay. One thing about consumer behavior that surprised you in the last few weeks? The irrational fear, fear of pizza, which goes through 300 degrees Celsius. And the last one, since you started it off, one change in consumer behavior that you think is here to stay? I think it's I think it's a little more um, facile with digital. I think people have just gotten more digital for more things. So the customer journey being more digital um, is here to stay. Okay, super. Thank you so much for for those answers. Uh, I hope that was fun for everyone listening in, and I hope it gave you some ideas on what the future of consumption looks like and what the future of CEOs at home looks like too. Um, Lots of questions. So I'm going to try and take some of those questions and I'm going to ask Agam to help me uh, as we try and navigate through this mountain of questions that we have over here. Uh, so I'm going to start with a question that came in pretty early, which is, are dark kitchens here to stay? Vivek, your quick take on that one? Um, I think dark kitchens will stay if they are able to do what Yogesh rightly called, which is to develop a fantastic trust on the whole process of cooking and the whole process of shipping. So if they're able to do that, I think they're here to say, because obviously that's, they're providing a need that consumers have. Interesting. Um, there's a question uh, from Ayush Sultania, and Anant, you might want to take that, which is every calamity she brings an opportunity. Um, what opportunities are you seeing as an investor? Yeah, I think uh, it goes back to the earlier themes. I think there are quite a few interesting uh, consumption themes which will come up, which is around services at home, uh, gaming, uh, more entertainment at home. So I think some of these we are uh, obviously uh, will will become pretty big. Um, online in itself, I think everyone alluded to that online and omni-channel will become very big. So companies which are focused on online or omni-channel, building brands uh, which are omni-channel or online will I think will be some of the one trends. Okay, I think there are lots of questions around top three trends, and I think a lot of us have addressed those modern trade versus e commerce. That's got something. Um, there's a question from Sriram Ganapati who says, This vocal for local, how will this play out? Do you see a movement away from MNCs towards Indian companies like ITC, Patanjali, Godrej? I'm sure ITC would want to answer that one. Tell us, Anuj. So uh, I have a different perspective. I think it was a call for Indian companies to raise their game, right? So I do not expect consumers to generally switch because it is local. I think what it is a call for is local brands to really build world-class brands like we are doing, right? Uh, and that is the call, build world-class brands, build world-class supply chains, and then the consumer will shift their preference in the local market to give us that scale. So I think that's the ask and that's what we do at ITC as well. 
Super. Uh, DC, you talked about sanitizers as something that you've sold a lot of. And there's a question from Weber Juneja, and I think this is a question that's also come from a few other people. Uh, do you see a, a sudden, a, a huge future for health sanitization and healthcare products? You see that becoming disproportionately larger going forward? Big time, very big time. Underscore the importance of what healthcare will start meaning to us. I Personally, to me, even if we find a vaccine or medicine and scary news, WHO has just gone on CNBC or, you know, virus may last for five years. Scary. So we don't know how it's going to be. But even if it is short term, three, six months, I think forever it has made that introspection in us on health and we just don't take anything for granted. I see hydroponic, organic, fresh farm, low carbon footprint closer to your place. I think all those will really rise big time. Mm. Boosters, not just food, even personal care. I think really they will have a rise. It's a one way. Question from Ruben and Alan, you might want to answer this. Would you continue to bet on the Indian consumption story? Would foreign investors continue to believe that there's a future in the Indian consumption story? I think the answer is only one, which is absolutely. Uh, I think none of the things on the consumption side change. We still have strong demographic tailwinds. We still have a very young population which is coming onto the consumption side. We have a very low per capita consumption and keeping next six months, eight months out, I think you have a long-term increasing salary trend. So from that perspective, I think nothing changes on the consumption side. It's just that where recalibration will happen is that the dollars and the investments will still come in. Maybe they'll go to slightly different consumption themes than what it was uh, last year. Super. Yogesh, you referred to trust, and I want to get to a question that's come from Rakesh Sharma, which is to say, you know, with all that's happened, uh, both for brick and mortar and for e-commerce and delivery partners, what advice would you have for, that can allow them to win trust of consumers from a safety standpoint? Your thoughts? Well, I, I think uh, clearly, you know, uh, you know, one of the questions that you asked earlier as well, you know, would brands play a role? And I, I, and I was absolutely, whether it's large brand or small brand, I think brands will play a role primarily because they are anchored in trust. Uh, what consumers are going to search for now is to be navigated through this pivot of trust. And I think whoever is going to be able to offer that, whether it's a package product or a restaurant or a QSR, is, is going to win that. And, and, and I think Vivek said this very beautifully because clearly, clearly people who are going to be able to demonstrate trust, whether it's through their size and the processes and are able to go out there and, and clearly communicate that trust to the consumers. Because at this point in time, it's all about reassurance. It's all about rebuilding uh, what, what goes behind the scenes to my pizza, for example. And, and, and I think that's, that's what's really going to happen going forward. So I think whether it's, a, it's an element of trust in terms of what do I do in front of you as, as, as a supplier or a vendor and what I do when I'm not looking at you is, is what really is going to, going to be important. And I think, I think I was reading one of the articles that was with, 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 with Vivek Sridi or somewhere where, you know, when you're delivering and you're talking about how the temperature has not been abused for the product that has come through, or you're talking about the temperature of people who've actually made that product for you. So I think these are all going to be small, small steps, but tangible steps will have to be taken for the intangible of trust to get delivered. So Prakash, um, okay, Prakash yeah. yeah. So Prakash, we've actually had you asking a lot of questions and it's time to kind of flip it over as well. Um, so Agam and we had one or two questions that we wanted to ask you. So I'll ask you the first one. What's the job that you've gotten really good at in the last eight weeks? <laughs> Making dosas. I can make a mean dosa now. What's the first Tell thing? Me Tell me a Netflix series that you regret, Kukash, watching. Uh, confession, I don't watch Netflix. Other than seeing uh, you know, the cricket bit on Amazon Prime uh, and seeing Justin Langer's story, uh, I haven't seen anything else. Um, what's the, one, the first thing that you're going to do when lockdown's lifted in Pune? Um, probably get to both of you and say, how dare you ask me questions? You didn't tell me this. This wasn't part of the script. <laughs> No, it was, it was in the fine print that you probably missed. Um, no, and one work related. I want to go and play golf. <laughs> Not cricket. Play golf. Not cricket. Uh, no, watch cricket. Yes, but play golf. 
And my last question before Agam comes in with his last question is we've heard a lot of uh, make for India, be vocal for local. Um, what's your take of the entire situation, people, business and economy? Uh, what's my take on the entire thing? I think one of the things that struck me uh, in this entire crisis is, and if I look at the consumer business as someone who's been a fan of that business and been part of it for a long time, I think it's what's really impressed me is the focus on people uh, on making sure that, you know, uh, organization that I'm now thinking, whether it's, it's DC talking about not advising teams, but saying, hey, thank you very much to the team. It's about Vivek saying, hey, what can we do to ensure that all those last mile delivery partners are taken care of? Or indeed the biggies like a, a Unilever or a Nestle and the kind of things they've done to take care of the ecosystem, to take care of people. I think that's been something that's been, that's been very special for me. And I think I, I'm a fan of businesses which will believe that take care of your people and then they'll take care of the business eventually. Uh, and, and therefore, when I see the converse, which is businesses taking hard calls on people, I sometimes worry that, you know, maybe they're not getting it all right somewhere. Yeah. So that's really what I would say. I think uh, I like a bit about how brands will play a role in the future. And the fact that, uh, it's, not, it's not a binary big brand versus small brand, but brands which care, brands which understand consumers, brands which continue to address consumer needs. And I think as long as people continue to work in that space, I'm sure, um, you know, brands have a terrific future ahead. Uh, about the economy, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an optimist. I'm a, I'm a huge optimist. And I, I do believe that, that this too will pass and, you know, boring lines. But I like that bit when someone says, you know, don't worry about the world coming to an end tomorrow. It's already Australia. It's already tomorrow in Australia. So, you know, I think that's where I would be on that one. Agam, your last question. Thank you, Anand. No, no, I mean, he, he, he self-answered that for me, you know, one tagline from this crisis. So I think he anyway said this too shall pass. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. I so wish that it would have continued for a very long time. So yeah. I think, Prakash, closing remarks from you and I think then Aisha can take over from there. No, I, I'd just like to say thank you very much to uh, A, to the audience. I think the fact that we've got 600, 700 people still listening in is a great feeling. Thank you so much. I hope um, you found value. I hope you found some insights. Uh, and I certainly think with all those people talking food, uh, there was some food for thought for, for all of us over here. Uh, so thank you very much to the panel. And it's been a pleasure uh, moderating this session. Oh, thank Would you. you Thank you so much. I have to say thank you to the entire, entire panelist pool, which is Anuj, Anand, Vivek, Yogesh, Devendra. Um, you all have really opened out to kind of, um, you know, we've been seeing messages coming through and people have really said it's, it's been an impact, impactful um, conversation. I have to say, Prakash, thank you so much. You've really navigated this entire consumer puzzle for um, all of us on this side of the, uh, of the camera as well. Uh, we hope the audience who's taken time off to be here, like um, I think Angam said, we've got about 700 people still logged in. Um, we hope you've had and enjoyed this session. We've had a great session putting it together. In fact, we've got another one that's uh, scheduled to come up on Tuesday. And um, y'all can see it right here. It's Live to Lend Another Day. Uh, we've got the biggies from the lending houses from Centrum to Aditya Birla to Kotak and the two CEOs of the rating agencies that will come and talk to you about what credit and liquidity looks like. Uh, till then, thank you everybody on the panel. Um, thank you everybody who's attended. Have a great evening. Stay safe. Good night. Good night, everybody. And don't miss the fact that there's no woman on this panel either. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. Cheers, everybody. Good night. Bye.